Well, you know, I'd, yesterday, or following the parade, the congressman came here and two of his staff, and I said, it isn't often I get a captive audience. And when I start talking, I don't know when to stop. That's all right. Tell, tell us about the parade. Tell, tell about the parade? Yeah, what, how do you think it was this year? Oh, I think the parade was marvelous. And I, people were very, very anxious, very interested in it. And the streets are always lined, but they were lined more than ever this year. And, um, but this announcer said I was 101 years old. I'm not, I'm just 100. See, I was 100 in March, and maybe you know about taking me to Indianapolis, to the legislature. No. Well, they, they had a party for me. Oh, yeah? When I was 100. And um, I have many awards on my wall that they gave me. And that was, uh, well, Jerry Denbo, who is our representative, and John Gregg, who is our representative from Knox County, they really spearheaded it. And a man named um, Vernon Tencher from Terre Haute, those three. But there was about 50 people went from Linton, and I got all kinds of awards. And That's great. it was a marvelous experience. Oh, I love Mr. Wright. He's nice. <laughs> I, knew, I knew Mr. Wright when he was rather young, and um, he ran for county chairman, and I was against him because I was loyal to the man that was in. Well, when, he, when Mr. Wright won, I called him. I said, you know, now you are my county chairman. So we have worked together since. Good. And he has a marvelous family. And, uh, well, he's just, I'm, lo I'm loyal to him. I, first place, I like a small town. And I like the people. It's nice to go down the street and somebody say, hey, Agnes, how are you doing? I like that. Then I think the people are friendlier. Well, I just, I just plain like Linton. That could be the new slogan, I just plain like Linton. <laughs> I just plain like Linton. <laughs> well, I was working for uh, Mayor Carlton, and of course, Mary Carlton's a term expired. And he bought a little coal mine south of town. And he came in and he said, how would you like to go down and work with me? And I said, I would love it. So I went down there with him. The mine was not unionized at that time. But we saw that it became unionized right away. And he, was, he took the responsibility of the bottom of the mine, and I took the top. And I sold the coal, went out, got the contracts. I weighed the coal. I did all the clerical work, and I even helped him build some cars. And that what, time, what, 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 what year are we talking about? I'm starting in 1946. And then in 1962, one day I was in the office by myself, and one of the men came in, and he said, well, kid, he always called me kid, he said, kid, we're through. And I said, what do you mean? He said, we cut into the water. See, we're supposed to be water from Jasonville down to Linton underground. Now, each year, the, the mine was examined. But somehow, somebody, some way, because I have, the, I have the maps of the underground. And it showed we had several hundred feet coal yet, but we didn't have. We cut into it, and of course, in I would say 30 minutes, the mine was gone. In 1884, the first deep mine was sunk. The first, and that was the Island City Coal Company. In 87, the second one. And then everybody got in the, everybody would come in, begin. And coal was very necessary. Right. About 1900, the census says we had 12,000 people. But it was not long 
And now you see, we had many foreigners, Polish, French, German, Wales. I know John A. Templeton, one of the big men that came here was, I think he was born in Wales. But anyway, they began to clear out. Mostly went to California, to the, to the gold rush and to the fruit countries. But now we, tell you, I can tell you this, and you can cut out what you don't want sure. to use. That's all right. We lived in the south part of town. My mother was very young. We had this small family. We had no hospitals. Well, there was um, my brother and my sister and I, at that time, were in school. I can remember my other mother coming in and putting a shawl over her head and said to my brother, see that they get to school in the morning. Maybe she'd get home before school started, maybe not. But I can remember her one year coming in and saying, they've got a big boy upstairs, oh, up the street. She had been acted as a midwife. See, we had no hospitals. Then one evening we were around the dinner table and uh, my mother baked bread. We had a platter of baked bread. So a knock at the door. She came to the, went to the door and came back and picked up the platter of bread. Well, of course, we complained. She said, shh, eat your supper. They've just moved in and they don't have a bite to eat. So you see, we fed our people. Then one evening we were around the table studying and um, the door opened, nobody locked their doors. A man walked in, he was drunk. And my mother was very frightened. So she sent my brother to the neighbors and she came back with a Scotswoman. She had her sleeves rolled up. She went up to him, she said, and what are you doing in here? He said, nothing, I'm not hurting anyone, it's cold out there. But she said, you're frightening this woman. So she took hold of his shoulder and armed him out. That so happened to be Phil Harris's aunt. So you see, we took care of the safety of our people. That's, that is the kind of people that Linton is made up of. And then, of course, you've heard about Job Freeman. Job Freeman was the one that gave the big building to the city for a hospital. And um, then, there, oh, there was mining, or I mean farming. Right. And then, I forget the year that the General Electric came, and that helped. Then the Kellers helped. And, but I would say that most of our profitable employment is from Crane. And we have a, we have a congressman that is extremely interested in that. And I think he has done more. Well, I better not get into the political side, <laughs> though I'd love to. I think Walmart, I, I don't know anything about their management. I was going through my checkbook and see me like half my checks is from Walmart. <laughs> the fast foods must be very, very necessary. I don't patronize them much. Yeah, but like it's changed the scenery of the town a lot, you know, and uh, doesn't seem to be any zoning laws or anything like that. Any what? Zoning laws, uh, meaning, you know, they can just. That's wrong. Yeah. That is, I said I'm never going to vote for somebody else again that won't promise his own, because that ruins us. Yeah. If somebody comes and wants to do something to my house, like side it. No, I'm not interested. If I were, I would get a Linton firm. I think, of course, some things you can't get here. But uh, why go out of town and get people to do things when your own people can do them? Oh, Phil Harris. Yeah. Isn't? Yeah, he's a good guy. So he's done a lot. He's done a lot for Linton, uh, for the Linton schools, the Linton children. And he brings a lot of good people into town. Gives the town a, 
a lot of good publicity. Yes, Phil Harris says, I think that's an, an, a very, very nice thing for us. Now this uh, woman that wrote You'll Like Linton, she married a Hamilton, and Bill Hamilton was one of the first men that he was a pioneer. He was a, a, a um, banker, and uh, I don't know where Wayne Hamilton married his, met his wife, probably over at Indiana University, but she was really a marvelous musician. And she gathered the people around her from around here that, that like, like good music, not, not jazz, but yeah, high kind of, type. Uh, what's it called? Huh? What kind of music? Classical music. We knew, knew more about that kind of music. Now, I, frankly, I know it takes all kinds, but I can't understand this, what we have now. That's the, that's just the difference in the age. Well, we had skating rinks, and all around the town, where these um, mines were, on, and when it was uh, cold weather, Saturday morning we went. We got back at midnight or night, and all we had, of course, at that time. Just about everybody went to church, and I can remember after church, a, a group of us getting together and going out and singing. And of course, we've always loved Linton's football. We've won some, I think, some state championships. And uh, it was my good fortune to graduate in the class with Elmer Oliphant. I know him. <laughs> I was in, Elmer and I were in the same chemistry class. I can remember that he thought, I think he didn't think much of my ability as a chemist. <laughs> and, uh, but he was, we're very proud of Elmer Alvin. In 1950, I was working down at the mine and me, uh, yeah, I almost forgot to tell you this, the, uh, judge called me and he said, I'm putting you on the welfare board. I said, judge, don't know a thing about it, but you can learn. I worked with uh, Dr. Um, Davis, who was head of the welfare department at the beginning, and I was always very proud of the fact that I was working with him when we got away with the poor farms. What's that? Hmm? What's that? That's a, that's a, 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 I guess a government thing where they took care of people like uh, that didn't have anything. And uh, I was on that welfare board 27 years. And it was a marvelous, marvelous expression, experience. I'm glad I'm not on welfare. But you know, so many people are on welfare that don't realize what it is. In 1928, that I was elected clerk treasurer. In that time, Linton was beginning to go down financially, and men, boys and girls would graduate from high school, go to Michigan, go lots of them to Pennsylvania. And it's been that way since. Too many of them, too many of them leave Linton. Mm -hmm. 